Well, hey, boys and girls, welcome to CBC Kids Online Wednesday Summer Kids Ministry. And so glad that you are watching and joining us for this time that we can be together. So the last couple of weeks, we have looked at the Holy Spirit, which is part of of who we talk about as God, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus, if you remember two weeks ago, we talked about Jesus promising in John 14, 16, that he would send a helper to be with us, which would be like a comforter or a counselor or a guide, someone that's there. So it's the Holy Spirit. When we put our trust in Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit in us and helping us. Well, how, does, how did that really happen in the Bible, in the New Testament, that we see? So that was John 14, 16. Then last week we looked at Acts 1, 8, and 9, and how it's uh, similar to Matthew 28. We talked about, about when Jesus says to his disciples, he says, Hey, you have a job to do, which is the same for us that believe in Jesus today, that are Christians. We have a job to do, and that's to go and to tell others about Jesus, to be his witness all around the world. And so we saw that in the first part of Acts. And Jesus also said, and we looked at that, and he said how uh, he wanted the disciples to wait until the Holy Spirit came upon them, and then they would go out. And so that's what we're going to look at today and looking in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 says this, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And we're going to look at this, what we call the day of Pentecost. The Bible calls that. We have that in today in Christianity, the day of Pentecost. Now Jesus says, remember the balloon from last week? Up, up, and away. And Jesus had ascended up into the clouds, and he said that one day he will return from us in the clouds the same way he went back to heaven. And today Jesus is still alive. He's alive. God is alive. And and Jesus is alive at the right hand of the Father God, it says in the Bible. And so he has sent us the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at that today of what happened in the Bible. And so I want to welcome you. We're going to pray, and I'm going to pray, and you can pray at home, and then we're going to sing, and then I'll, we'll look at this uh, passage from Acts chapter 2. Let's pray. God, thank you for this uh, time that we can uh, just continue in this way of having our summer kids ministry and on Wednesday nights. And Lord, I thank you for the boys and girls. Thank you for their families. Continue to pray for them and for each one of them. And pray, God, that you would just work in their lives and just be with each and every one. We thank you for them. And for tonight, as we learn about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit came to the disciples and all the, the people that day, and how we have the promise of the Holy Spirit for us today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's worship the Lord now.
So boys and girls, I hope you had fun singing and worshiping the Lord and that it meant something to you as you sing the song there, uh, continuing to sing about uh, the Lord and who He is and worshiping Him. And tonight we're going to continue, as I said, looking at the Holy Spirit, looking from Acts chapter 2. And tonight I have with me some more balloons. Now, uh, last week we talked about the balloons and up, up, and away. But we're going to look at these balloons and kind of remind us something with the Holy Spirit here. And so as I said, we were talking from Acts chapter 2 and looking at how uh, the day of Pentecost and how the Holy Spirit came. Now, there were a whole lot of people gathered there, and I have some different balloons, and there were people that were different and that they spoke different languages, came from different places, and remember the disciples were there and they were praying, and then Peter uh, began uh, to speak, and then the Holy Spirit came. And so we see and see if you see this balloon here. Now, like I said, there are different sizes and different shapes and different colors. You know, there's those long, thin balloons where you make balloon animals, and then there's uh, really big balloons that you blow up that are round. But if we were to blow this up, you know, the round balloon, like we showed last week, we fill them with uh, helium, and they can go way, way up, up and away in the air. And then balloons like this, we could blow up and just bat them around and things. So balloons are fun. But without anything in the balloon, it's really not a lot to it. So what do we do? We put some air into it. And so here we go, put a little air. Whoa, kind of made a funny noise, right? And it does that. But see this balloon, it's kind of what we would kind of call lifeless. And this is how the church was. You see, the church was lifeless. It had really nothing happening for it at that time. And so uh, what need, they needed was is that the church really was just starting in what we call the New Testament church and the people, the disciples and the people, they didn't have, Jesus had ascended and he had gone up to heaven. Now he left them to do this work, but they needed the Holy Spirit. So they really had no life in them, no way to go forth and be the witnesses, no way to go forth and really live for God. That's why they needed the Holy Spirit. That's why God said, Jesus said he would send the helper. So they were kind of lifeless. But then, something happened and the Holy Spirit came. And when the Holy Spirit came, the Bible tells us that it was the day that God sent the Holy Spirit is what Pentecost was and it breathed life into his church. So the church would be all that God intended for it to be. It could now go out and, and what we call thrive and do great things. And so before God sent the Holy Spirit, remember it was lifeless. It was nothing, it was nothing there. Like this balloon, it has just kind of hanging there and really has nothing, no air. And so we need some air and we need to make it to become of life. And so it needed some air. The church needed the Holy Spirit to fill it and to give the, each individual to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be able to go forth and to do great things. And so it didn't even matter if they spoke the same language because God came A lot of air I got to do, right? And the Holy Spirit brought and came, and then they didn't speak the same language. Remember I said there were different balloons of different colors, different sizes and shapes? There were people there that were different in the way that they, countries they came from, places they came from, and languages they spoke. But when the Holy Spirit came and Peter was preaching, they could hear and they could understand, and they could understand one another, and they were all worshiping the Lord. Not only that, they were worshiping the God all together, and the Bible says that 3,000 people were saved, that it was such a great, what we call a revival, a great time of the moving of God, and the Holy Spirit coming, and the New Testament church starting. <laughs> Makes a funny noise, doesn't it, when the air comes out. And so thousands of people attended the church and were added to the church that day. And we see that the Holy Spirit came and filled, just like this balloon has been filled, it filled the people and the church. And it was a great and wonderful thing. So I'm going to tie this off here. And we see that we have our balloon. And the balloon now is filled with air, 
And that's what happened in Acts chapter 2. God filled the church, the people there, with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us when we put our trust in Jesus that we have the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians it says we're sealed with the Spirit of God, meaning we have what it continues to say, this inheritance that one day we will have eternal life with Jesus and living with Him. And we have that eternal life now. When I say one day, that means when we die and go to heaven or when the Lord returns, as we said, He went up, up, and away, and He will come back in the clouds one day for us, those that know him. So boys and girls, remember this from Acts chapter 2. It's the day of Pentecost. It's the day the Holy Spirit came, just like the, the bloom was filled with air. The Holy Spirit filled the people there, filled the church. The New Testament church was started. The disciples would go out and would preach with that power, that helper of the Holy Spirit with them, helping them as they went forth to be witnesses and to tell others about who Jesus is. So hopefully, as you remember, as I said last week about the balloon and up, up, up and away, that you'll remember about the balloon. And anytime you put the air in the balloon, maybe you'll remember if you put your trust in Jesus that you have the Holy Spirit filling you and giving you power and strength. He's a helper. He's a comforter when you're sad or there's a hard time. And he's what we call a counselor to give you direction and guidance as we read the Bible. He helps us to understand the Bible and God's Word. And so remember the Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. That's a very important chapter in the Bible, in the New Testament, where it's the starting. The church really starts off and begins. And so we want to remember this, and I hope you remember. And anytime you play with the balloon and filling it with that air, Remember about the Holy Spirit filling us. And so let's remember this. Hopefully you have learned this tonight and you will continue to learn about Acts chapter 2 and maybe read it with your family and do the activities. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for this time with the boys and girls. Thank you for our time that we can be together. Uh, just a short message of learning about who you are and what you have done for us and how you have filled us uh, with the Holy Spirit when we put our trust in Jesus we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us and guiding us and directing us and being that comforter and that helper. And we thank you, God, for we thank you for what we can, how we know about this and what we read in Acts chapter 2 and how we read in Ephesians about that we are filled with the Spirit and that we are sealed with the Spirit for eternal life with you and inheritance, a guarantee of the living in the kingdom of God. And we thank you for this and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, until next time, remember, anytime you're playing with the balloon, air filled in the balloon, you can be reminded of the Holy Spirit that fills us. All right, until next time, we'll see you later.